Your job. I'll leave a ten dollar bill. Do we have the <laughs> other one? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. I emailed it to you, but you'll have to be downstairs. No. I didn't. I did. I got his, but I didn't get any. So. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to get through this. So it's, it's uh, just after 6, and we're, I'm going to call to order the regular select board meeting. Today is um, Thursday, September 5th, and uh, first thing is to um, approve minutes from last time, which was a regular meeting on August 15th. Can I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Um, any comments, discussion on the minutes from last time? That wasn't here. Did you read them? Did they make did sense? Do you understand what happened? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, hearing no discussion, all in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries with one abstention for. Um, not having been here, I that's assume. Right. That's right. I'm putting that's words right. in your mouth. That's right. That's right. You got it. Uh, next, next item is set adjust agenda. Um, as far as I know, I would like to have us add um, an item number six to set the first public hearing for the new town plan, which is to set here. the public hearing. Set the date for the public hearing, um, and then an uh, item number seven to approve the unified development bylaw changes as recommended by the planning commission for which we just had a public hearing minutes ago. <coughs> Do we have a motion to? So move. All right. Second. All right, any discussion, any other changes? We good? All right, all in favor of adding those two items to the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, good, good agenda. Next communication from the audience. Is anybody here for something that's not on the agenda that we want to just communicate to us? Um, I'm here for the town plan. Yes. If you had any questions because uh, you're having the draft version, and I understand you're setting the uh, public hearing for We're setting, yeah. 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 So if you have any questions on it, and I would just like to say, give a little shout out to the um, planning commission members who um, did it. So that's a long answer to your question. Okay. So I think we just added that as a number six. Six. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For uh, so we'll hope we'll be setting the first public hearing on that. On the, yeah. I don't anticipate we're going to have a discussion about the plan itself. We just need to set a date for the hearing. But thank you. Okay. Although yeah. No, so we just got the the um, the latest draft. I think it is here. I believe this is the latest draft that, that you all just had a meeting on earlier this week. Was our hearing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so we're ready in our court now. Right, um, and there are um, Kristen. I'm not sure she's got all the additions and corrections. There are edits and suggestions. Yeah, the it's changed. Okay. And that's, that's all. Yeah. 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 So we got a draft. Well, now this is an updated draft. draft that we're going to be having. Correct. Right. And then after that first public hearing, is there a okay. second one? Yeah. Second one. After there can be additions, the planning commission I makes. Or no changes. I asked the board can make changes. I, think. Okay. I asked Christine about that. Sure. I asked her about that. And my memory of the email is that um, we could make um, non substantive changes, mm -hmm. but if there are any substantive ones, then we'd have to possibly have further hearings. So, okay. Right. For instance, photographs going in which are still being added are not substantial or edits or something like that. They're just grammatical or mm -hmm. something like that. But new topics or headings or something like that would be. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, next up is town manager report. Um, Sean Fielder. Okay, so uh, coming off the last meeting, we did get our... Uh, various paperwork processed for the Bridgman Reservoir projects. So, um, contract in place with uh, Spates. We are, um, we saw a targeted completion date for December 19th. Um, 
the the project is uh, ready for the contractors to come in, if you will. So the cleanup from uh, is all done, removal of the old uh, structure. One thing we had discovered here in the past couple weeks is that there were a few uh, what I would call soft spots in the floor of the reservoir, and um, we did uh, obviously get A and E involved right away on this. So they're reviewing. Uh, we're going to have next week an inspection with one of their subcontractors. At this point, we don't have the strategy for what the repairs would be, but there's uh, I think there's 11 spots that have been identified that. Um, there's a little bit of what we would call spalling, so the concrete might have just uh, picked up a little bit in certain areas of the floor of the reservoir. It's not uncommon for a reservoir, particularly something that was built in 1940, to see this, so it's not catastrophic. It does mean there are going to be some repairs that have to be made on that, but... Um, maybe the ceiling or something. That's, that's what we're looking at. As yeah. night comes come up, maybe... It's a little bit of matter, as long as it don't continue to... Well, yeah. it, there, I mean, there's places, and it's like four inches that peel right out. Yeah. But, you know, like they said, it's not uncommon to see that. And uh, I think it was Chuck there I met, met with. He weren't concerned about it. You know, he said there's a company, I think, at Barry, Nikon. Yeah, it's Nikon. That kind of specializes in this stuff. Yeah, so, let's seal it right now. Yeah. And uh, actually, it's interesting to talk about this. I mean, that those those things didn't just happen. Those probably were there right along. We just right. didn't know. It's because we got it open and exposed. They sure, every time you open it up, you find one. Yeah. Probably still will next time. So we're, uh, as I said, next week while. we'll have an inspection and then we'll be getting our strategy figured out. I did just, um, you know, other than that, uh, Spates is working with their subcontractors and, you know, we're where we need to be at this phase with uh, trying to meet an aggressive, you know, construction timeline of uh, December 19th. So we're proceeding as best we can on the Bridgman project. Tom and his crew have done some work up there with uh, fixing the road, if you will, so uh, the contractors can access. Um, I know he's gonna do an extension on a culvert, uh, probably clean up the sight lines. So uh, you know, we're prepared for them, and I, I know their subs have been on site. They're already getting themselves lined up to order the steel, the corrugated material, uh, you know, make sure the contractors have what they need to you know, get the epoxy coating on. So we're as good as we can be right now, I assume, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, keeping moving here. I got a couple things I'll just try to get through quickly. Uh, I did just recent, recently meet with the, uh, the president of the Vermont Community Foundation and just updated him on various projects that are occurring in Hardwick. And the objective on that is just seeing how that group could potentially be involved supporting uh, via grant support, you know, anything that we're working on here, whether it's uh, LVRT or, you know, as an example, maybe Yellow Burn Project as an example, just trying to extend and build out with them about another place that maybe they'd be interested in uh, providing su support to the community. So just some conversations from 20,000 feet and just seeing about what opportunities might be out there. Um, continuing to do work on the Cary Road property, and we did uh, get the double wide out um, uh, as you're heading in from South Woodbury uh, and coming in on 14, the double wide has been removed. So we still have some, uh, there's some work taking place on the estate closeout to uh, get other um, properties sorted out. And um, as soon as that takes place, uh, then we're gonna be in a position, I know we talked about this in one of the most recent meetings, be in a position to figure out, okay, what are we left with? You know, what do we have to do here? Uh, and, and in the short term, uh, Danny and I have had just some basic conversations on this. Um, you know, what could we do to take advantage of that property you know, for trail use moving forward? So we're, you know, we're keeping an eye on that and uh, we'll know more, I think within the next seven, seven to 10 business days, hopefully we know more about the schedule of what we might see for, all right, we're closed out, town's in control, if you will, of what's remaining, including the property, and then the ball's in our court, figuring out, okay, how are we gonna go? Perfect. Any questions there? Okay, um, did do, um, we're on the uh, LVRT, a couple updates there on the rail trail. We do have our uh, design plans uh, as provided by Summit Engineering. This is for the section from Slap Hill to Pumpkin Lane. Those, um, those are, have been submitted to Vermont USDA for their review. They had a couple of comments. Um, Eric and I will meet with uh, Doug Weber uh, next week just to say, okay, we're good, we're gonna consider this final. Then we will get into uh, what we're gonna be doing in regards to the schedule and uh, going out for bid on the construction. We anticipate on this um, construction in 2020 at this point. So uh, that's, that's where that, that one's at. 
uh, did do a site visit with Tom for the depot, uh, historic depot, with, uh, Wiz being there as well, and then a contractor who has been doing the foundation work uh, for the expansion for the uh, climate controlled portion of the building. And uh, just looking at and evaluating some options for improving some of the cellar drainage at the depot. Um, you know, this year uh, we know anybody with a stone, stone foundation had high water in their cellar, most places in the village. That was one of them, so we've got a little bit of a strategy mapped out to uh, make sure we got the proper size sump pump in there, and then Tom's uh, mapped out an approach to improve some of the piping that would receive the sump pump water and send it away from the cellar area. So I, I think we have a good plan there as far as I'm concerned. I think Wiz was comfortable with it. Appreciate Tom having a look at that and uh, offering some suggestions. So we're continuing to do work on the Yellow Barn Business Accelerator Project. Uh, at this phase, we are close to having uh, all of our permit issuances in order. Uh, we are getting into doing our public notices now. Um, the, the focus in the near term, near term uh, and you've heard about this ongoing, is uh, final finishing touches on the um, Economic Development Authority application and Vermont Community Development Program grant applications. We're getting a lot of support from various folks, NVDA being one of them and a lot of other project planners. Um, one of the details here is that we did have our uh, NBRC grant for the purchase of the property. We had intended to have the property purchased by September 30th, 2019. It's gonna be after that, assuming uh, some things line up here. So that would have been two years since the grant award, right? Yes. It's 24 months, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. So what we- not long that we stood up there. Mm -hmm. uh, time flies, right? So we do have, uh, we've got a, there's two things that we processed. Uh, in case you helped a lot on this, I really appreciate your help on this, keeping track of some details and uh, processing. We have a notice to proceed, which is one of the official notices. And then we also have uh, filed for an extension. So we've got an extension into September of 2020. So everything's in good order there on the NBRC grant. Um, I don't know, let's see, I, I think I maybe noted this down a little bit further, but I'll hit it really quick now. Uh, we did have a uh, site visit this week um, with uh, one uh, venture capital firm that is interested in providing some support. Uh, the way they would potentially be involved is to uh, assist with the processing, implementation, and distribution of uh, new what are called new market tax credits. And uh, that went really well. Uh, don't ask me to describe all the financial details of new market tax credit. That's where the consultants are going to offer some support. Um, but it's uh, it's it's uh, they were impressed. This is a firm that does this as a line of their business, and they really liked what the town had to offer. So uh, Eric was there. I don't know if he wants to offer anything else on this. Okay. It was good meeting a lot of people. They were impressed how many people were involved in the project. I mean, how many like different players. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, and uh, I think this is important to note at this phase, um, we have uh, the Agency of Commerce and Community Development as one of the planning partners that's been involved with this, and one of the things they're working on right now is trying to really get a decent handle on a representative and uh, you know an, an economic analysis that makes sense, if you will, and uh, you know the it's pretty significant what we're hearing about in regards to you know assuming a certain number of employees uh, and obviously these things change a little bit as we move along but you know we're talking millions of dollars of uh, economic impact in the form of wages and you know indirect benefits of it impacting other uh, businesses in the community so that is that is a pretty significant um, part of this and the point is this uh, they are putting you know, some of this in bullet point format so we can really have a look at, all right, you know, based on a couple of experts who this is their field of work, here's what we're seeing for potential impacts um, to the community uh, economically. So those are good things from my perspective. So we did, uh, back to LVRT. Uh, before I do that, any questions on Yellow Burn? Just a shout out to Christy. Yeah, and her shop at ACCD. They've been really providing an excellent amount of support, so we appreciate that. So we did, uh, on, back on LVRT, um, we have the Creamery Project plans, the section from Slap Hill to North Main Street, uh, basically adjacent to our town garage and the historic depot. We do have a uh, basically 90% plan, which is pretty much close to a complete plan. We're gonna look at that this next week um, to make sure we're comfortable with it being considered final. 
the key point here on this is that we are showing an updated design that does maintain the railroad tracks adjacent to the historic depot and it keeps the trail between the railroad tracks and just uh, what I, it's the uh, upside ditch if you will or the ditch uh, closer to the town guard side of the property so uh, we're, we're on target there to maintain that and uh, frankly you know I think that's an asset moving forward is how I start to look at that because we're going to be one of the few sections of LVRT where there's some railroad track remaining and also we got the historic depot right there. So I think folks are going to be interested in seeing that when they're out and about and doing their recreation. FAST is on board and now uh, VTrans would just do a review. This construction again is um, just with the reassessment and uh, evaluating keeping the railroad tracks we're looking at 2020 for uh, construction on that as well. We are, uh, there's a group um, changing gears here, there's a group who are reviewing the water and sewer rate structure after the first year of implementation, the new structure if you will. Uh, and as a reminder that started um, July 1st, 2018, closed out June 30th, 2019. So there's a group of uh, folks who are uh, analyzing that first year and then figuring out what we've got to do uh, moving forward to make sure we're going to uh, you know, match up our revenues with the budget that is needed. And uh, the plan at this phase is we'd have the new rate structure set up so that the select board could review that and look at it at the September 19th meeting. Uh, and then uh, with that uh, occurring as such, the rate would then be effective for this next first, the next quarter, the second quarter of the water sewer budget year, which would be October 1st through June 30th, 2020. Did host a uh, representatives from the U.S. Census Department and the key point here is that 2020 is a census year and they reach out to various entities and they do try to get to every town and municipality uh, political entity in the state of Vermont in advance of when the census actually starts up. So that was just a basic introduction of both the census. We'll probably help with just getting some basics out whether it be front porch forum or on the website just reminding people about it and be involved and it's important uh, you know, to be involved with the census. Those are the key things for right now. There's some science and technical detail in this next item, which is um, I attended, uh, it's a PFAS, PFOA, which is per and polyfluoroalkyl substances and a lead and copper substances training this week. The, the Kendall Cass and Edward Richard are two water operators, wastewater operators. The, uh, the PFAS standard, uh, it's one of these emerging contaminants and uh, the highlight is this, the state of Vermont decided through executive action this May that we're going to have a, a standard that is much more stringent than the federal standard and it's going to be a maximum contaminant level. What that implies is if it's a maximum contaminant level, if you exceed a certain value in a test, there is the assumption there is some kind of validated uh, medical health impact to somebody consuming the product. So this standard again is uh, it's very stringent, it's 20 parts per trillion. Uh, just a couple of things from 20,000 feet. The, the order was signed in May. It, uh, we are required to do the test prior to December 1st. We didn't know this was coming. Uh, you know we saw some chatter about this in May but we didn't necessarily know it was coming and uh, it's a $475 test. So why is that important? Well, we're a year out on our budgeting. We didn't anticipate it was coming. $475 doesn't break the bank, but it's something that, you know, we should have had a little bit of time to be able to plan for this. So uh, I would anticipate we'll provide some uh, uh, feedback to our representatives about this, uh, getting into this next, next legislative session, just about the timing on this. And then also about, uh, there is a significant issue for anybody who exceeds this standard uh, and this is, it's, it's pretty, it could be pretty controversial, or it's going to be a problem, is how I would say it. We would not anticipate a problem on our system, but we got to run our tests. If you exceed the standard, you immediately go to a do not drink notice. That's very significant. Mm -hmm. And with PFOS and PFOA, uh, oftentimes, let me just say it this way, oftentimes with contaminants, if you, have, if you go to a do not drink, it's, it's because there is an acute health risk. There is some question... I wouldn't want to imply that a water product with PFAS or PFOA um, is good for you. It's not. But, uh, you know, there's some argument about is this something that's going to impact immediately or are we talking over consuming one liter of product for a 70 year period and then potentially increasing, you know, your chance of getting cancer one in a million. I mean, this is, it's, it's really a lot of statistical analysis. I don't want to say any more than that other than we are getting our testing lined up. 
These are the chemicals that were found near... Everything. <laughs> in everything. Down, down Bennington, right? Yeah, that's correct. So that's what's so driven a lot of this a, discussion. It was like a DuPont plant or something, right? Yeah, but it's, it's a PFAS and P4 or any, any tough, is basically Teflon. Right. So yeah, anything, of making Teflon, yeah, right? st anything you come in contact with these days is going to be Teflon based. I mean, it's just the way it is. But so I thought, I thought these were byproducts of the manufacturer of Teflon, not actually part of Teflon. Well, that's what, that's what caused these elevated. And down in Bennington. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're because of the facility. So. But we all everyone's have gonna, everyone's going to have some. In our kitchen, so, so we're all washing it, and it's all going into the water table. Yeah. When we're <coughs> <clears throat> yeah. I wondered if the, so the school <coughs> testing for lead and copper and all that stuff that yep. the state is doing anyway, is that teamed up with this or? So uh, just clarification, separate? yeah, clarification on that. Um, PFOS and PFO, again, the highlights are we're getting ourselves set up to meet our deadline and we wouldn't anticipate any problems given what we know about our uh, source. And this is a, uh, you know, you do a test mm -hmm. at basically right coming off the source waters. We wouldn't anticipate any problems. So we got our fingers crossed on that. On the lead and copper, the Herdwick Town Public Water System has been doing lead and copper testing uh, sure. since the um, 90s, you know, doing yeah. it right along. So this is a much more uh, accelerated approach at all schools and daycares. So as the example goes, uh, Hazen Union will be doing its testing and the elementary school will be doing its testing. And it's actually going to be pulling a sample from every tap that potentially could be having somebody taking a drink from it. So we, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but you can imagine at Hazen, I mean, you could be talking 70 or 80 fixtures where somebody could potentially be getting a drink. Mm -hmm. And what, what the state has honed in on is they want to try to identify, okay, if we have a fixture that is causing a problem, that maybe it is old lead solder, or maybe the condenser itself is lead piping and it's leaching lead and copper, we need to address that and get it out. The, the statement is, you know, no, no good level of lead or copper is, or lead, excuse me, is safe. There's no, there's no safe, right? So we want to get it out. So it's a really aggressive approach. We, the, the way we're involved is obviously we, we supply water to the schools, but the schools themselves, and as well as daycares in our community, they are ultimately going to be responsible to check the tests, you know, at each of their individual taps. Mm -hmm. So we already tested at the at the source or at the, at the storage tank, or where are we testing? On? Yeah, what we do is um, the way that the lead and copper rule uh, has been administered for public water systems is that you have a plan, and what you're trying to do is get representative samples throughout the distribution network to get a feel for, you know, are you going to experience a problem? And what we have to do as a public water system is make sure to the connection, the quality of the product is good, all right? But it even goes further. I mean, the, the, the real thing is we, had a, we somehow have to figure out making sure the product is good all the way to the tap. Well, if somebody has a fixture that is an old fixture and we, st we have a good product from the water supply coming in and then they have a fixture that's bad, that's not our fault, if I could say it that way. Well, that's right? what I was asking. We, I think every year or twice a year or something, we get a report in the mail. That's correct. And where are those consumer tests? Confidence. In, you know, in the past, where have those been? Out in the distribution network. So you're a random Several person's Several of them have been, because you, they were at Charlene's a lot, so sometimes yeah. they've done it at my house. Uh, so it, they just have their different places where they so You just pick somebody's tap. Yeah, and the state would numbers. look at your sampling plan and make sure, is that going to be representative of what we see in the system? It wouldn't necessarily, to be uh, fair to the comment, though, it wouldn't have necessarily been at a school or a daycare site. But you, uh, the way the rule has been set up is you're, you're trying to just, again, get representative samples to figure out, is the public water system itself providing a product that's not corrosive and not leaching off material? So the PFOAs... Um, that will be tested, you said, at the source. That's correct. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay, Danny's giving me this clue. I got to move along. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the clock look. And uh, I can say this now. The I've been mentioning this for a couple of meetings now, but the land merger with uh, Judah Vine and the old senior center is complete. We have that all sorted out, so that's done. Yeah. All right. And to, uh, two Never things. Never to be spoke of again. Huh? Never to be spoke of again. <laughs> Traffic, uh, one, two other things. 
<clears throat> pedestrian uh, traffic task force uh, representatives will meet. Uh, Doug Morton will meet with a group of folks here in town next Friday. We're going to start to do just on the ground review of the NVDA traffic and ped study from 2012 and then the uh, locomotion study from 2017. And uh, the objective with the task force, as a reminder, was just to get some things in order on what should we be doing priority wise to uh, you know, make sure we're doing it the right way in regards to safety issues in this subject matter. Great. I'll close with this. I have been nominated for Kiss the Pig for the Judah Vine Library <laughs> fundraising project, so I'll be taking your votes from here moving forward. <laughs> it's only a dollar a vote. So my wife's already said she's putting 100 bucks on the table, so I don't know how to take that. <laughs> what does that look about that library? Kissing a pig. <laughs> Who's your competition? I don't know yet. It's to be announced. I assume since kids are going to be voting, I would imagine there's a principal or two in the game here. <laughs> all right. That's all I got. Thank Sorry, you. I went pretty long there. My bad. No, that's all right. Uh, you get all excited when you talk about that water stuff. Just yeah. Like John just like John was like, yeah. Those questions, i got to answer them. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Well, they're good questions. It's important. Stuff. I mean, they're, they're important questions nowadays. But. All right. I'm going to save some time in a few minutes here. Yeah. yeah Tom, short, sweet tell, tell us what you guys have been doing. <laughs> well, uh, I can't remember what we've been doing, really. Been doing uh, I know ditching. that we did five meter pits. Uh, they've been installed. We finished up work on Bridgman, like Sean said. Uh, we extended a culver over there today. Been hauling some winter sand in, you know, like on Wednesday when it was pouring rain. So that's what the boys were doing then. Uh, we started the ditch work on the other side of Hopkins Hill towards what we call, uh, I think it was the old mail farm. That's what we know it as anyways. We started there working our way down over. I think we're halfway down on this side. Uh, so hopefully sometime next week I can meet with Doug to go over to Hardwick Farms Road. Uh, for the back road grant money stuff so we can get get that one going after we get done Hopkins. Uh, crusher is all done. Uh, he should have finished up today so the guys were hauling gravel today up around I think it was up around Browns and up around Houston Hill work, working up around around there doing some gravel and stuff. Uh, Pearly's truck is down again. I don't even want to talk about that truck anymore. Uh, uh, I helped Lloyd today trace back wires and stuff and it's gone back to a computer module. So he knows the company, that freight freightliner that he deals with over in New Hampshire, that's actually programming Pearly's truck right now, sending over that just temporarily just to see if that is the problem. If it is, then we'll have to order a computer modular for his truck so we can get that going again. Uh, uh, like your advice or your, which, which way you guys want to go on this. Been looking for a used truck. Okay, uh, we got twenty thousand this year in the budget to purchase one, and I can't find anything worthwhile. I mean, the ones that I found, the best one I found so far is three years old, has fifty-two thousand miles, and they want twenty-four thousand for it. Now, what kind of truck are we talking about? Uh, just an F one fifty, just just like he's got now from Mullen, because uh, that transmission, that one's about ready to go, because that one's slipping. Uh, I can go with state bid price yeah. Yeah, for, for a new truck for twenty six thousand yeah. for the same exact identical truck, just an F one fifty, you know, eight foot bed, regular standard cab for twenty six. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. There's no point in buying the used ones. Or unless we can. It's crazy because every time you go online, I look, I've dealt with Ford down, down here. They had a, you know, a, a red pickup down there, you know, 2000, I think it was three years old, with uh, 35,000 miles on it, I think, and they wanted 28,000 for it. You know, trying to wheel and deal. One week is fifteen hundred dollars off, and you know, another week is two thousand dollars off. So it was back and forth, and you know, just looking at these used trucks is just I'm um, going nuts on them. But anyways, so kind of like a direction to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can get a truck with one hundred twenty some odd thousand on it, and for seventeen thousand, and it's five years old. You're saying the best new is three years old, 52,000 miles, and they want 24,000 for it, and you can get a new one, no mileage, for 26,000? With a warranty. With a warranty for 26? And all the parts are new. 
Yeah, it'd take eight, eight weeks to get 80 cents. Right. They told me mine was here four. What was that? They told me mine was here four. Yeah. Really? But. So the issue is just that we don't have quite that much money. We didn't budget. budget quite that much, but Tom's budget, I mean, the budget is a rough guy that you try to operate with. Well, that's so capital expenditure, so right. it would come right. it, it, it would come out. Right. Because if transmission goes, then we're going to put four or five grand in that right now. Still have just to keep it on the road. <laughs> Right. That truck's got, I think, 163000 on it. They give me any trading credit on that, Tom? No, I don't think so. I mean, there's a whole big giant hole in the back bed. We covered it up with a, a used uh, uh, plastic uh, bed. Whoa, hold on. Thing. You're hurting so. our advertising right now. <laughs> Come on. Well, we run them until they We die. have a nice used vehicle yeah. for sale. Yeah. You know, let's... Do you need another day? I mean, What's that? I think we should buy a new one get it over with. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't necessarily need to know tonight. Well, Danny. I just order. want a direction to go. Yeah. Well, yeah, but mowing season's almost ball, coming to an end too. Yeah. Right. It's almost coming to an end, so he's not running here and there. And we're, we don't have the water truck all, every day. So, so are you thinking you're going to spring? Well, no. I mean, it's going to take eight weeks to get it. But I mean, yeah. they want to think about probably not that truck. Before the winter. I mean, they just they're doing zero percent on super duty, so we probably could have. That's like it's ten thousand dollars savings, and you don't pay interest. Yeah, but, we were, but we don't pay interest anyway, so it wouldn't matter. There was no discount. Right. That's on a twenty too, because they're building twenty. Yeah, he said he can't get a two thousand nineteen. No, yeah. they're done. But they do the same price, the steep bid price on a twenty. Yeah. Tom, have him do motion. Have him do motion. Just saying. Mm -hmm. It's up to them. I, you don't have to do it tomorrow. Yeah, but I would certainly entertain a motion to. Uh, I make a motion that uh, we buy a new truck versus a used truck at the state bid price. Second. And be done with it. Because yeah. honestly, a new one should last us long time. 10 years yeah. in that job? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't go. What year is that one? It takes a long time. To, we bought that one with 100 and some thousand miles on it. Yeah, about, yeah, about, yeah. It was like 110 or something when we bought it. Mm -hmm. It lasted about four years, three, four years. No, I think it's already yeah. six years. Six years already? Yeah. But anyway, a new one yeah. should last a long time. Ten years, easily. Yeah. Oh, then so. Yeah. With no, without worrying about it. Yeah. It's got, it's got 160, you said now? Yeah. Yeah, 163,000 on it. You put on 10,000 a year or something on it, roughly. If, if, if we're lucky. Uh, I mean, like the new one that we got, that F-250, what's that? It's almost two years old, I think, close to it. No, it doesn't matter. Not a year and a half. But anyway, yeah. it's, it's only got 8,000 miles on it. Oh, yeah, and of course, it, you put, what, two? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 get, get picking up the railing. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's, a, it's a wise investment not to have to deal with it and worry about it. It's certainly, I, yeah. when you price it out at 10 years, it's not, and it should last that long. Yeah. All right. It's so aluminum now, so you won't have no big right. rust holes. Exactly, yeah. All right, so motion on the table is to direct Tom to move toward the new F-150 at the state bid price rather than scrapping around for used. I'm going to throw in there about, the, like, if you're doing a warranty, because the warranty is like an extra 1500 Oh, extend a warranty? If you're doing extended warranty or not. Yeah. Let me, yeah. Um, Let me look so at that it. I just don't yeah, want to be price. stuck yeah. at 26 if it right. ends up being 28 just email the warranty. So. We can, but we can make decisions via email. So no, what we can say. No. Uh, well, can I say, 20, can you say 26,000 plus the warranty? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Direction. Yes. I think we're, we're not authorized. authorized. State bid we're not authorized. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? State bid price with the warranty. Yes. Yeah. Yes. With the warranty. I amend my motion to be the state bid price with an extended warranty because. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All you need is yeah, one. So if you're ever curious, you can go on the State of Vermont website. Yeah. Building General them all. Services. Yeah. Definitely seems to be the way to buy trucks. Yeah. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. So, so the other heads up, I'm going to oh, give you guys geez. a little bit more time. <laughs> that was exactly well, smart right there. That was <laughs> smart. No. He's got this, more to say. this is on the big trucks. Yeah. Pearly's truck is due up next year to be yeah. replaced. Okay. This is the one that's giving you fits right now. This is the one that's giving us fits right now. Uh, so to get the truck like we normally do, we usually wait till after town meeting, then order order the truck. Yeah. As it sits right now, that truck, if we ordered it in March, we probably wouldn't get it until August. The body and plow setup on it, they're already scheduled out till June. So if we wait until March, like you normally know do, if yeah, we yeah. get that truck yeah. in August, we won't see that truck until the following spring. Holy cow. 
going to be all checked up again. So you got to order now. Well, I'm going to get some. I want to talk start to Andy and stuff it. down there. Start I want to start working on it to give you guys a good heads up and get. Because right now, like the Max, we're almost like a year out in order to get their chassis. International, no, right now is uh, out to five months. Wow. And so I got to figure out uh, Freightliner and stuff like that on what theirs is. All right, go do your homework. So, yeah, basically, you guys got guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. I don't know. Huh. Yeah, that's all I got to scare you with. So. All right. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. All right. Uh, police Department report. Aaron's not here tonight, but we did receive via email the um, incident report for the last month. So everyone should have that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, unless you had anything to report. Okay. So next item number one, Jody Lou Smith is here um, from the library trustees to give an update on the library expansion project. At least that's what's written here. That's, that's what it is. Okay. Um, I think our, my last visit here was in the winter last year, and I said I would come back and keep the select board informed. Um, so um, the update is we have um, officially launched the capital campaign in April with a kickoff event. We have um, spent the summer doing two simultaneous activities. One is running public events. We've had one every month. We will wrap up with Kiss the Pig in October. Of this season. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> <laughs> because we have a winner right there. <laughs> um, and then we have, um, on the quiet side, have been um, having, doing, um, Request to potential larger donors, um, a lot of meetings uh, with potential donors and also with advisors, people who have raised money in our area. Um, many, many meetings. Um, we've received advice, we've received assistance, we have um, really kind of built out the foundation for this project. And we um, went into this capital campaign year not really knowing what to expect. Um, we didn't know if money would flood in the doors or if this would be a slow trickle. And so a slow trickle is probably what you would expect. Um, but we've done pretty well for our first um, season. We're, um, we've received $40,000 in the past month. Um, we're pretty close to hitting $200,000. Um, That's very It's good, yeah. Our, um, and this, before the end of the calendar year, you know, the, win the window from October to December is the major giving window, and there's many people who we've spoken with or um, had communications with who um, have said they will make it, they will be donating, but they don't, won't know until they sit down and figure all that out in the fall. So I expect we will have some significant gifts between now and the end of the calendar year. Uh, what it does mean, though, is that we, Accept it. We, we've had to accept that our optimistic hope that we might go to bond in this calendar year was optimistic, but so we will go into next year. Um, but we're feeling okay about that. Um, we have um, a lot of people we've talked to, and we have um, a new direction um, out of a lot of these conversations that we had during the summer. We um, came to the realization that there is a lot of funding that we can access if we. Um, tell our story in a collaborative way in the sense of the role of the library for the wider community and the town. And so we build, they call these a collaborative letter of, in, in, letter of inquiry. And it, if building one of these allows us to go after more national money, not, not only funders who fund in Vermont, but funders who fund all over. And so we would be going with an angle toward rural economic development, rural development in general, um, rural education. Um, and it will, we're, we've, um, our trustee, our board of trustees recently approved um, to uh, buy a subscription to one of these larger foundation um, granting agencies to do the research that development requires to make good application for these projects. So one of the things I um, wanted to talk to the board about tonight was um, having the official approval of the select board um, for um, a, just a, a testimonial of support for. And it's not for a particular application, it's more for we will be sending a lot, 
I hope, if we can find a lot to apply to um, letters of inquiry and finding foundations who would be interested in funding this work. And so we start with a letter of inquiry with testimonials, and from there we would potentially make a larger application, which are different for every foundation. What does this testimonial from us need to look like? Just a few sentences. Um, you should have in your packet um, some examples. Um, I sent you the um, draft of the letter of inquiry, and it has the testimonials that I have so far. And that's the beginning. I expect we'll have probably half again or twice as many by the time we submit them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, short. They're just short. Yeah, well, so if your, your letter there, as a, a native, at least a couple of generation Hardwickian, I would like the leaving Hardwick Village awash in X-rated theaters and dinghy bars sentence. Jettisoned. No. Yeah, that's... You don't want that? Yeah. No. Why would you put that in there? There was well, only one X-rated theater. That's what I'm saying. It, it wasn't awash. It was a just long time. Time. I just, I don't know. It's I don't think it needs to be in there. That's all. The rest of it's good, but okay. we don't need to... We don't it, was, need it, was a, it was a visualization of hard times. Of well, the, for those of us that lived through them, <laughs> they were good times. <laughs> they, they were times. They were times, yeah, yeah. And, and this isn't the only time in history when Hydric was doing well. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't do well all the time. No, so, absolutely. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it isn't true. I just don't know if it needs to be in this. That's <laughs> it is true, but uh, yeah. So these I are mean, X-ray theaters. I hadn't seen, even seen those words in years. <laughs> So, so is it, yeah. beyond that, it's good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for feedback. So what, would it be most helpful maybe to have one of us pen something and then have the select board adopt it next time so that it's like yep. in here and it's from the whole select board? Is that good? Or? It's good with me, absolutely. It's fine with me, yep. I nominate you. You nominate her. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I could also, you, uh, yeah. hmm? I think the chair should do it. All honestly. right. I mean, I'm sure Liz will help you. So I'll work on it, and I'll send <laughs> it out. I've already done it as a business owner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you've already got one. Yeah. I'll do one. It's not going to be me. I'll send it around, and we can just do a um, yeah. resolve to adopt it next time. Is that, yeah. that the timeline's great. okay? Hmm? Do, is timeline is okay? That timeline's fine. Weeks? Okay. Yeah. I right. still have several more people I'm talking with, and... We'll, yeah, we'll build it out. Is it important to include, like, if we're expressing our support? Is it also would it? Is it important to to include that the town has has supported the library financially? Yeah, for, yeah? it would okay. be great, and also okay. has um, applied for grants. Right. For the library, yes. Anything that any, anything that documents consistent ongoing support. And things like taking ownership of the senior yep. center. Yeah, donating is the fact. Donating and the senior working, center. Yep. And working to uh, working through all the. Yeah, working through that merger. The merger. Um, anything and documenting other stuff that too. role and, and really the goal of this is to point out that it's you know. It's a supported by the town. It's supported by the town and it's a project that has wider ramifications. Support. Yeah. Okay. The ramifications are not just for necessarily just the patrons of the library but for the community as a whole the community as a whole yep right okay yep got it no oh. all right so excuse me jody's around the project yep when when a few years ago mm -hmm. like eight or ten years ago there was a lot of research in the library community about the economic impact yeah. of libraries mm -hmm. and they were showing that every dollar invested in public library and was a different result invested in school libraries provided X amount of economic feedback into the community and in terms of school libraries they could show academic improvement you know correlated to investment in libraries does the state of Vermont have those statistics? Is there anything that you can show that we could use to to, to argue that you know we're we're we can the, in the state of Vermont we know that every dollar invested in public libraries results in X amount of economic development within the community. Does the state have those numbers? Um, 
That's a good question. Um, I have looked long and hard for that number and not come up with it in that succinct format of this for every dollar spent, you get this. I've kind of come up with it in a, in a fuzzier way that's been a little harder to say, we've shown this dollar is, has this return. Um, that said, that's, that's a negative result. I, it, it could be out there. I haven't found it yet. I would love okay. to find that number. Well, I would assume that if the state library has it and you ask for it, they would well, be Well, I happy haven't asked to. the state librarian, but I could certainly do yeah. that. Um, let me, let me make a note yeah. of that. Yeah. The, the, other, the other significant number that you might ask about mm -hmm. is what percentage of families, mm -hmm. particularly in rural Vermont, do not have access to the internet? Okay. I know that that number is decreasing, mm -hmm. but you know when I was in Louisiana 10 years ago, something like 52% of homes did not have access to the internet and relied on public libraries and school libraries, which are closed mm -hmm. mornings and evenings. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's a compelling number for the value of the public library, particularly with evening hours, mm -hmm. in a community. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. I will look for that number. Okay. Um, it may not be there for Vermont. <laughs> for Vermont. Yeah. Um, um, I, w I will look for these. Yeah. Um, these are all. Th these would belong in kind of a, a full application, I think, for these kinds right. of grant funds. Yes. But if we know them. those numbers, right. we can reference them in this letter that Eric is going to write. If sure. I can put my hands on them soon, I will pass them along. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Thanks, and thanks for the update. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for your ongoing it. support. We appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up is item two, Hazen School Board candidates. So you may remember from last time, unless you weren't here, that, um, <laughs> that Hazen Union School Board has two vacancies. We have, to my knowledge, never appointed people to fill vacancies before because in the past we always had a Hardwick Town School Board. <laughs> but the elementary school merged and we no longer have a Hardwick Town School Board. So then the like second or third fallback or something is a select board, and here Plan we are. C. Plan C is this group. So we solicited letters of interest from uh, the community, and we got three, which we is have two openings. And we have two openings. Have three people. And three people. Can we assign that third person to one of the other seats on in planning commission? Town? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can. <laughs> I think it should be encouraged anyway. Well, there, yeah, there was one Just person saying. who couldn't be here tonight who wrote um, in her letter that she wasn't, here, so maybe she drew the short straw and she has to go to the Planning Commission. I don't think the Planning Commission has to go to the Okay, so, sorry. Um, so we do have, we did have three applications. We had three, or three letters. We have the letters on the, in our packet right now. We had them, we don't, I won't look for them. They, we had them via email. But we do have, um, hmm, we well, do we have, have two people. We have Patrick and Brett are both here for this, correct? Correct. Yes. So maybe um, let's start with uh, Brett and just, we, if you could just uh, introduce yourself and just say your name and not anything you would like us to know that, you know, or nothing long. Okay, I'll be very brief. My name is Brett Stanchu. I think I know all of you or most of you. I live in Hardwick Village and I've lived here for a couple of years. Before that I lived in Woodbury and I served on the Woodbury Elementary School Board for four years and then I left when I moved, when I changed residency. Um, I have a daughter, Molly, who graduated from Hazen two years ago and my younger daughter, Gabriella, is a freshman at Hazen right now. Um, she graduated from Woodbury a couple of years ago. And I'm interested in serving on the board. If you'd like, I don't need to be competitive about <laughs> these positions. <laughs> but I volunteered because I am a parent, and I often feel that it's good to have parents on these boards. Um, I myself benefited phenomenally from public education, and I know that education really matters to kids. And they have one chance at education, and hopefully we do the best for them that we can. Um, and that said, I know that schools change, 
And high school in particular is a very interesting time now because it is very different from when I went to school there. And it's in a process of a lot of change, which I think is probably a good thing. Our world is changing very quickly. Um, and then I guess the last thing that I would say is I know schools are a reflection also of a community. And so the healthier the school is, while education is for the individual student, it's also for the community itself. And the healthier the school is, the healthier the community is. And I am the librarian at the Woodbury Library, and my salary is paid by tax dollars. And I know that that's a gift from taxpayers, whether they sign on to it intentionally or not. Those are taxpayer dollars that pay my salary that help support my family. And I feel that part of that trust is the school board has to spend those dollars wisely. They're given, and some people just write a check, and the tax bill doesn't matter. But for a lot of people, the tax bill really does matter. So my feeling is with education, it's that complex equation of trying to do best by individual students, trying to do best for an educated populace, which is the point of the public school system, and then spending the dollars well to try to get there. So do any of you, and, and I don't need to be competitive if you find anyone who's, I know in Woodbury when I left, I had to go around and find someone to take my position. <laughs> so I had no idea who would apply, but if you find someone who's certainly better qualified, definitely take them. Um, but if you have any questions for me, let me know, and I'll answer them for you. Now would be the time if anybody has questions. Now would be the time to ask questions. Uh, no. No, thank you. I yeah. appreciate your interest in sharing your your views. Patrick Kane, would you please? I'm Patrick Kane, and I would agree that if you choose, if you don't choose me, I'll, I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up here, I graduated from Hazen. Um, both my children went to, to Hazen uh, and the elementary school mostly. Um, and so I think that the, um, my family has really benefited from the school experience here and I think it's time for me to step up and make a contribution. Uh, in terms of particular skills that might be useful, um, I'm an architect, I've designed schools, I was the project designer for the middle school renovation project. So if that's helpful to the board to have some perspective on facility type questions, I could provide some uh, expertise there. Thank you. And I agree with that. I agree with that. So, you know, you need board to have different, different expertise. Mm -hmm. Not everyone needs to be an educator on the school board. Someone needs to worry about the building. <laughs> or have an understanding of how it works. And, and a realization of what it costs to have a building. All right. Great. So, um, Hearing no other questions from the board, thank you very much for coming. We, we are going to have a deliberative session, executive session at the end of our meeting to go through the many applications for these just positions. Just don't put me on the planning commission. No. <laughs> 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 I love that. You can tell me no, but you can tell me no, but don't reassign me. Yeah, it is. Sorry, you were just talking. Thank you. Good, thanks. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the show. Yeah, thanks. Right, yeah. <laughs> Good night. Um, next is uh, item three, select board to review application from Heart of Vermont Chamber of Commerce for posting a street banner on Wilkes Street, the one that goes between the telephone poles up there um, for a craft fair I event. I make a motion that we approve the yep. application for the banner for Heart of Vermont Chamber of Commerce. From 9 23 19 to 10 7 19. Second. Two weeks. Um, we had a second, so any discussion? This is where you buy your fall crafts in anticipation of Christmas. Well, and there's been some question about whether or not the craft fair was going to be happening because. Uh, um, front seat cup. Because no, Jane Johns is no longer the right. organizer, yeah. and so. People have been asking questions out there in the virtual mm -hmm. land and stuff. Oh, so and here so it is. Karen, thankfully, Karen Richardson has stepped up to organize nice. it. And so it really is going to be happening, which is a good thing. I mean, 
Yeah, it's true. kind of a challenge because Jane did it for many years. So yeah, and it's true. Uh, so there was a big question yeah, whether or not it would happen. So happily, yeah, it will. Let's do it. Good. This is a great way to advertise it. Yes, here it's we happening. are. It's happening. Yeah. All right. So any more discussion on this? <coughs> we have a motion in a second. All is this, no? I just wonder, is this, this normal size, normal, yeah. normal procedure? It's probably it's the same, same one, one they put up every year. It's 3 by 20. Yeah, they don't go out and buy a new one, I'll tell you that. There's <laughs> okay. even a picture okay. of it right here. They just change the dates. They just change the dates. Now, the dates. now okay. it's legal. <coughs> yeah. Done. All right. It was so. violating billboard laws prior, apparently. Oh. But we're good now? Well, because it's been hanging over on the... community in the state. Huh. All right. It's been hanging over on the... Before we uh, get too far off track, all in favor of approving the banner, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No, Am I supposed to sign this? Town of Hardwick. Uh, date and sign. Skip it by the select board. Push or it. We, oh, jeez. Need glasses? We could have, it said, or it's designee, so we could have just designated you to sign this, but instead here I am doing the heavy signing. <laughs> okay, there we are. Um, all right, thank you. Next up is item four. Eric, uh, if you'll allow me. Oh, geez. Um, the other, well, just real quick, I, I, just going back on the hazing, just to be uh, fair on the process, yeah. the other candidate, could I just, should, would it be valuable just to read that, that party wasn't able to make it tonight, but do you want to have the statement read back or not Does for the hazing <coughs> position? Does that, no? The third person. We read it. No, we read it. I mean, okay. it was a, a you have it. You similarly have it. interested party. <laughs> Right? Yep. So You'll it's great. That. I think it's awesome that we had three, three. people who are Jeez, actually interested fantastic. in serving. <clears throat> yeah. You know how excited I am that there's three people. <laughs> okay, thank you. Seriously. And we, Jane, we're going to send. Shut it down. Yeah. Just make that note. No, it's okay. Um, all right. Thank you, though. Uh, next item four, select board authorized town manager to sign Estoppel. Is it Estoppel or Estoppel? Yeah, I've been waiting for somebody to say that. <laughs> uh, certificate for the Novus Hardwick. 500 kilowatt solar project uh, to be set up and running very soon. This is the one in East Hardwick and Gary Demick's gravel pit. The board had previously um, approved, we voted to approve participation in this. This is where we benefit. It's essentially a, a net metering type arrangement um, where we pay them and they pay our electric bill. I make the motion to reauthorize Sean Fielder as town manager to sign this document. <laughs> You avoided saying because uh, I don't have any idea how to say it. We have a second. To estoppel. It. So, to the best of my understanding, um, this estoppel or estoppel, however it's said, is really just us saying that, um, to the best of our knowledge, we don't know that Novus is in breach of contract or that they're not going to be able to do the, con the project or they're out of money or we don't know any. Of as far as we know, that's not the case. Everything's okay. Street. And so we, we're not certifying that that is the case. We're just saying we haven't heard rumors around town kind of deal. Or like what is, I we're not having to do research on it. that that is correct. Is we that did have Bill Davies yeah. did review I, it. I think this is an opportunity to, if there was a, something illegal action that was taken against them. Mm -hmm. This is a we point know where we can it. bail. This is where we oh, bail. Like something's gone bad if nobody's shown up yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, there, if it wasn't built. Or something. Correct. I mean, I think that's the way I read it. It was, it was a, just to make sure it gives, you know, it's like uh, when somebody dies, they put your name in the paper so anybody you owe money to can get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's this stuff about, you know, okay. that there's no default and nothing, uh, you know, to the customer's knowledge with respect to the customer or any other party. Right. Um, there's no yep. pending or the customer knowledge threat yeah. of action or dispute. So yeah. I think it's all right. like, you know, we haven't. No one's anything. raised a concern to us that this they are, they're not that's what we're saying. acting in good faith, basically. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Um, all right. So there was a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of approving, or uh, we're not approving, we're authorizing Sean to sign this uh, certificate. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, thank you. Next up is um, item five, select board to approve um, a voting delegate to VCLT to their annual meeting, um, which is, help me somewhere. October 2nd. Thank you. One o'clock. So In going? Killington. In Killington. Yep. Oh. 
Thank you. Thank you. So. I would like to make the motion that we uh, <coughs> assign delegation to Sean Field, the town manager, for the VLCT annual business meeting. Second. Yes. Any other nominations? Yeah, anyone else want to go? <laughs> Hearing none. Um, no, it's not a nomination. Danny made a motion um, that we uh, uh, that we assign Sean to be our voting delegate. So, and you're okay with that. Yeah, you're going. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I was. It's my job. <laughs> he didn't volunteer. I will. I've, I've been to one. Day. Uh, long day. Long day. Well, that's when you go down there for the snow contest. Okay. Nope. <laughs> contest. One. Me and Louie did. We yeah. had place way, way back. <laughs> Oh, that was a goal. <laughs> it was. We've been dead 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. So next, we have an additional item number six, which is we need to set a uh, first public hearing for the new town plan according to uh, our esteemed um, zoning administrator, Kristen Leahy. In order to be on schedule, this needs to be. Monday, October the 7th at 6 p.m. I mean, could, do we need a motion to say that October 7th we have the first? Yep. That's what we're scheduling the public meeting. Review hearing. the town plan. Draft yep. of the town plan. Yep. And dra and it's available or will be shortly on the town website. Um, I, uh, the older one is and the corrections soon will be. I yep. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion to set the date. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Yes. Uh, any comments on that date or the process? Here? So that's a select board meeting night? No, it's, no, it's a no. Monday. It's a Monday. Oh, what the heck? Okay. Because of the heavy damage. I see. Okay. Because we can't do it at our next select board meeting. <coughs> yeah. Today. Right. Okay. Then in order to get yeah, in, in order to wait keep it going. Next Thursday. Right. Yeah. That's fine. So this is what Kristen said we should do, and I think okay. we should do I just, it. I made a mistake. We should. Keep moving. All right, so all in favor, um, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next so, is item number seven, which is another one that we added, and this is to since, take I'm sorry. sorry. Since it's a Monday evening, is it a 5.30 thing, or is it? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank goodness. Um, and so item seven is to um, approve the unified development bylaw changes as recommended by the planning commission for which we recently very recently had a public hearing um, so just to summarize those changes are basically um, two one is um, removing some language that restricted where a group home could be placed um, per next door to each other right couldn't be next door to each other which is for from some statute State okay. statute, it's mandated change, and the second one, second change is the removal, basically. Right? Removal, yeah. yeah. And then the second change is um, changing the or expanding the um, the highway mixed use area to include essentially include the area around what is currently Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, which was formerly Wright's um, Auto. Auto, and has been essentially a business or highway mixed use. And it is currently, and so it's just a kind of boundary, just a boundary change. Boundary change, taking that out of the forest district, which there's not. We heard tonight there's something like five trees. Five forest. trees and three acres. So small, <laughs> small forest there. So making it more correspond to the actual use. So those are the changes there. Um, Kristen said she'd only had one other um, inquiry, and that was. Uh, from someone inquiring from a um, conservation point of view who just inquired about it and said okay. So. I make a motion that we uh, approve the... the... The unified development bylaw changes as recommended by the Planning Commission. That's it, right there. Second. Yeah. You decide. <laughs> Any more discussion on that? We're not, we're not glory hungry for seconds. Right? Oh. <laughs> Spread All, <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Perfect. Good. 
Um, so we're going to move through. Do we have any select board reports? I was at a Solid Waste District meeting oh, yeah. last night. Just a reminder, I don't know, Lucian, what's happening with the compost group, but the uh, municipal the MSP, I can't remember what it stands for, that grant from the yeah. Solid Waste District, uh, the round two grants, the deadline is October 1st. That's for that $5,000 grant that potentially for whatever. All right. Just a reminder. So the composting thing is currently on hiatus because the two other members had too much to do this summer. So I need to get back in touch with them and see if they want to start back yeah. up in the fall or if it's like yeah, going to close be. out and I'll get back to you on that in the next meeting too. Thank you. Yeah. Good news is it's compost business, so it'll still be there. Just going <laughs> to <laughs> turn it over. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> I would like to take a few minutes to start the process of killing off rumors that I anticipate are going to grow up in the next hundred years or so. Uh, there was some excavation done behind the depot and in the course of it, the excavator found a gravestone. Things stopped. Have we found a grave nobody knew about behind the depot? Uh, Mary Brochu stepped up and, and having an enormous amount of experience with genealogical research, she chased down the name of the man and his wife who were on the stone um, and found that they are in fact buried somebody, someplace in New York State with a completely different headstone. The stone was moved to behind the new section house, so it's standing there with this man and his wife listed on it, but they are buried in New York State, and we just put it there instead of reburying it. Um, so if, if people start telling stories about now they this definitely gravestone. It probably was <laughs> now they have one of the granite sheds and it was thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's yeah. reject the it place to, reject, to be reused, somewhere, recycled and that's where somehow. It got pushed over the bank and the next thing you know it's going to <laughs> Right. And so it showed up and um, it's been thoroughly researched. There was no grave there. It doesn't mean anything except it's really heavy. There was a machine to move it at the time. That's where we put it. I do not anticipate it's being moved at all for the foreseeable future. A couple <laughs> generations, anyway. But, however, that doesn't mean that there may not be a body buried over there somewhere. You well, so far as we could tell. <laughs> There was, a lot of action. there was a lot of action that went down over there back in the day. Just not that lot, guy. It wasn't just the, the X-rated movies in the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there, there was a lot of pulp and a lot of loading of milk, and there was a lot of action over on that street. But it wasn't the these day. two people. Yeah, so if there's right. something there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something they're else. not named you know, on the headstone. It might be gaudy or something. I right. can't know. wait to see the newspaper. Oh. The title. <laughs> He's not even kidding. Where is he? Yeah, he'll watch it. He'll watch it. Yeah. Oh, boy. Good tourist attraction for the real trail. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to start the good rumors about yep. it now. We should probably have our own headstone, like a headstone. I setup. dig all the time, and I've just been waiting to find something interesting like that. And you haven't? No, I don't ever find that. You guys just have to deny it's not haunted. Yeah. It's oh. not haunted, say it a lot. It's not haunted, despite what everybody said. Not haunted. No, 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 no. Nobody says it's haunted. It's just. It's not haunted. We, we However, if you come here to see the haunted, whatever, yeah. we do have <laughs> But officially, it's not. Okay. Officially, it's not. No. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, any new business? Old business. Um, I make a motion to go to executive session. One number one. Second. Because then we have to go to number two after, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was under number one is to review economic and economic development loan fund. Topic. Topic. Okay. All right, so uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, to include town manager, and we're going down to your office? Yeah. Okay. okay. And we're up into the schedule. Perfect. Good job. You never can tell when we start our meeting. Sometimes it starts out slow, and we catch up, and sometimes we move along and then fall behind. Liz, and she did it again. I just climbed up. Mm -hmm. Can't win.